What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Honda Accord, courtesy of Apple Honda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because this thing has been completely, obviously, redesigned for the 2023 model year. This marks the start of the 11th generation Accord now. It's been around for quite a while, obviously. You also get two years or 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well. So that's going to save you a little bit of money there too. But ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2023 Accord. LX is going to start at $27,295. EX for $29,610. Sport Hybrid, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $31,895. EXL Hybrid for $33,540. Sport L Hybrid for $33,875. And lastly, the Touring Hybrid for $37,890. So you can imagine with all of those trim levels, there are a couple different power plants available for the 2023 Accord. First one is going to belong to those non-hybrid trim levels, and that is going to be powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder, putting out 192 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 192 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1,700 RPM. Power is going to be sent to the front wheels through a CVT, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.2 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 29 in the city, 37 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. So then there is that other engine configuration belonging to all of the hybrid trims and the one that we have today. That one is powered by a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder with two electric motors, making a combined 204 horsepower, 247 pound feet of torque. It's pretty impressive. Sent to the front wheels again through a CVT zero to 60 time, slightly quicker coming in at 6.6 .6 seconds for this one with MPG numbers coming in up to 51 in the city, up to 44 on the highway. That is dang impressive. And yet again, taking regular unleaded fuel. So you don't have to shell out for the premium fuel. So I like that. But anyways, before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our hybrid Accord, did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's actually a little toggle switch located directly behind the shifter. If you hit that, you're going to get normal econ, sport, and individual adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, steering sensitivity, and actually the climate control settings then as well. And so now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. I'm actually just going to bump it up to uh, sport driving mode. It did immediately downshift for me. So it is holding the RPMs at a much higher level, giving you more of that power on demand. So I like that. But anyways, let's go ahead and find the straightaway. Let's put the Accord Hybrid here to the test. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one. Yeah, baby. A little bit of slipping, just slightly. It's a little bit wet. Yeah, that'll work, dude. That is plenty fine. Definitely not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway, honestly. I love this hybrid configuration in the Accord because it is incredibly smooth when it comes to that acceleration. There's no like, I don't know, turbo lag, obviously, because it's not a turbocharged engine, but you will probably get that in the other engine configuration, as you typically do, of course, with turbocharged engines. But this is an incredibly smooth acceleration, and it's plenty quick for doing things like merging onto the highway. So definitely serves its purpose quite well in the Accord, without a doubt. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so believe it or not, the braking configuration is going to differ between the turbocharged engine and the hybrid configuration. So for the turbocharged engine up front, you're going to get 11. 7.5 inch ventilated front disc. For the hybrid configuration, we actually have 12.3 inch ventilated front disc. So a little bit bigger rotors up front. In the back, 11.1 inch solid rear disc. As far as that braking feel goes, it's actually pretty darn good. Kind of a smooth braking feel. It's definitely not a firm braking feel, but I like it. It brings you to a nice stop in this thing. So I personally haven't had any issues in the Accord Hybrid here. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension, in the back independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it doesn't have an adaptive damping suspension, it doesn't have an air suspension, so it feels pretty much like you would expect the ride quality to feel on the Accord. You can feel some of the road imperfections, but again, it's pretty much just like the Toyota Camry as far as ride quality goes. As far as steering feel goes, now that is something I absolutely love 
on the Accord. It's definitely weighted on the heavier side of things, especially in that sport driving mode. If I were to take it out of that sport driving mode, it does instantly loosen up that steering feel. But honestly, even in the normal driving mode, it's still kind of weighted on the heavier side of things, which I personally appreciate. Still definitely heavier steering feel than a Camry, even in that normal driving mode. So I love the heavier steering feel, instantly points you in the direction that you wanna go. So I am a huge fan of what Honda did with the steering feel, and they always do do a very good job with that as well. But anyways, touching on cabinoids, that's another thing that I immediately noticed when I first got in this one, because it's the hybrid configuration at least, this is an incredibly quiet cabin. Now, I will say I do have the climate control settings on, so you might hear a little bit of that. But other than that, this is an extremely quiet ride. So it's kind of like you're driving an electric car, at least at lower speeds here, like I'm doing right now, 20 miles per hour, because there's no engine. You just got the electric motor. So that's pretty cool. Then touching on visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine out my rear view mirror. So definitely not gonna have any issues with rear visibility. Did want to also mention though, if you go with that touring trim level, you get a couple other things like rain sensing windshield wipers. So it's gonna automatically turn on the windshield wipers for you whenever it detects any kind of missed or rainfall, but also a head up display. So it's gonna project your speed, speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield, better helping with forward visibility. So you get those two things only with the touring trim level. So I do wanna emphasize that. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new, completely redesigned 2023 Honda Accord. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Honda Accord finished in platinum white pearl. In case you were curious of our exterior color name, as always, let's go ahead and start where this one is built and assembled. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number one, indicating that the new Honda Accord, at least for US customers here, is built and assembled in the US. So, little fun fact for you. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. Like I mentioned earlier, the Accord has been completely redesigned for 2023. Just some fun facts for you. Again, length is increased by 2.8 inches. Rear track grew by 0.4 inches. The hood is longer as well. And of course, you got the fastback roof line in the back now, which gives it kind of a more premium look along with the rear taillights as well, actually, in my personal opinion. But we'll get to that. Let's go ahead and start up front. You do have a redesigned front grille with active grill shutters, meaning they're going to open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time. So I like that. LED headlights to the sides with LED daytime running lights as well. You do get the automatic feature with them, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, the headlights will turn on automatically for you there. But you do also get automatic high beams that do come standard for every single trim level across the board. So you can put your high beams on at night and if it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically then dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beam so definitely a very convenient feature there my wife absolutely loves that feature in our car so that is something you're probably gonna like as well and i do like the lower hood line too it definitely looks like they lowered that but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Accord. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of this one, you kind of have this chrome trim surrounding the upper portion of the windows to start with that. Body color, power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. However, I will say they are gloss black for the sport trim levels. That of course is what you guys are looking at. They will be heated on the EX trim level and up. LED integrated turn signals coming with the EXL and the touring. And then you do get the reverse gear tilt down feature only if you go with the touring trim level. But then take a look at the wheel setup, 17 inch alloys coming with the LX, EX and EXL. And then you do get 19 inch alloys if you were to go with one of the sport trim levels or the touring as well. So again, taking a look at the C pillar towards the back, you do have that fastback style roof line, which has kind of been the style lately. And I do like it. It usually tends to lead to more cargo space as well, which we're going to be touching on here in a second. And you do actually get gloss black side skirts if you were to go with the sport trim levels. And that's again, what you guys are looking at. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, I believe since we have the sport trim level, we do have a gloss black shark fin antenna. Otherwise, it should be body colored. Rear spoiler, again, finished in gloss black since we have the uh, sport trim level as well. You do have some trim level badging on the rear trunk there and my favorite redesigned LED taillights. They are super bright and again, they have a very good design to them. But one thing that kind of surprised me, I remember usually Honda always have these massive logos in the front and the back, but this is a tiny little logo. This is like a throwback to like 90s Accords right there. I don't know, I kind of like it. 
I like the tiny little logo in the back, so good job, Honda. And then just below it all, at least on our hybrid trim level that we have, there is a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath the passenger side there. So having said that, I'm not sure if this is gonna work because it's a hybrid, but I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the Accord, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, it actually is a self-opening trunk. So I'm just simply gonna press the button on the key fob here. There is a button by the driver's side, kind of left foot and the button on the trunk itself. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 16.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there are some levers in the cargo area. There's a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. You do have some cargo lighting back there. To my surprise, there's actually a couple grocery bag hooks found in the cargo area now it's a very common thing in suvs but it's kind of rare in sedans so i did like seeing that and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will find a little bit of in-floor storage and a tire inflator kit as opposed to an actual spare tire but then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 40.8 inches which on paper is a ton for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there so plenty of space for me rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard if you wanted dual rear usb USB charging ports go with the EXL or touring trim levels. No rear ventilation that I found on ours today here, unfortunately. And if you wanted heated rear seats, go with the touring yet again. So anyways, then making our way up to the front seats, cloth finish is gonna come with the LX, EX, and Sport. Then a leather finish coming with the EXL for leather, Sport L for leather, and touring as well. Heated front seats coming with the EX, EXL, Sport L, and touring. Ventilated front seats for the touring trim level only. Power adjustable front seats for the EX trim level and up. And memory settings then for the EXL and the hybrid. As far as seat comfort goes, the seat comfort was actually really good. I like the lumbar adjustment as well it definitely adjusted it a good bit so overall you shouldn't have any issues taking this thing on a long road trip just for the seat comfort alone then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping and it's going to be leather wrapped for the hybrid trim levels at least so that of course is what you guys are looking at right now to make your way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your honda logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock unlock that button to pop the rear trunk there and the circular button that is going to be your remote start which is going to come standard actually on every single trim level of the accord so i like that so you can warm this thing up on super Super cold days in Pennsylvania like today and then it is all keyless enter with a push button start for all trim levels across the board so all I'm going to do here simply put my foot on the brake and press that red engine start button located kind of just to the left of the air vents there and so once started up gauge cluster pretty darn good here 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster will come standard for all trim levels you're going to have a digital speedometer front and center and actually when you adjust the driving mode it is going to adjust the colors of those uh, gauges as well. So if I put it in that sport driving mode, I'm getting a lot of red hues. If I put it in normal, it kind of switches to blue. And then if I put it in econ, it kind of stays the same. So really it's just the sport driving mode that adjusts it, but still, the gauges look plenty fine, but I will say wouldn't have minded if there was a bit more customization with the uh, with the loadouts and also the colors as well. But so then making our way to overall interior quality, a power moonroof is going to come on the EX trim level and up. I love that. Overhead sunglass holder is going to come standard for all trim levels across the board. LED interior lighting also coming standard for all trim levels. I like that. Automatic climate control is going to come with the LX, but then you get dual zone climate control for the EX trim level and up. So both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there. And I like how there's kind of like LED backlit lighting for the actual knobs for the climate control settings. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Aluminum foot pedals coming with the sport trim levels, auto dimming rear view mirror for the EXL and touring trims, and then a wireless phone charger is going to come on the touring trim level only. So overall, when it comes to interior quality, there is some hard touch material on the doors, but it's not too bad. Actually, I do really like this design that kind of goes just above the passenger side glove box continues on just above the air vents there. That's kind of something I think they pioneered in the Civic, but it definitely looks really good. I like that. It kind of reminds me of uh, what Audi did back in the day. Just in front of the shifter though, you do have a good bit of rubberized storage to put your cell phone, a couple phone charging ports up there. Got your dual cup holders just to the right of the shifter, electromechanical parking brake, and within the center armrest, it's actually a decent amount of storage there. And there is a 12 volt power outlet in there as well. So overall, definitely not too bad. Wouldn't have minded seeing some uh, 
LED uh, multicolor ambient lighting though, I will say that. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen because this is a massive infotainment screen that we have here. So I will say if you go with the LX or the EX, you're gonna get a seven inch color touchscreen display. But if you go with one of the hybrid trim levels, you're gonna get what you're looking at, which is a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display. Either way, you get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, but with the hybrid trim levels, it's wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So you don't even have to plug in your phone for it to actually recognize the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So that is pretty cool. You can check out your climate control settings up there. There's some driving statistics, of course, and your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there's a few of them actually. Four speakers and 160 watts is gonna come on the LX eight speakers and 180 watts for the EX, EXL, and sport trim levels. And then you will get a 12 speaker Bose sound system if you were to go with that touring trim. So having said that, we got the eight speakers and 180 watts with us here today. So as always, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Oh my gosh, is that Journey? Is that Journey? You guys seen that Family Guy episode? <laughs> Anyways, that was actually, it was okay when it comes to clarity, not a whole lot of bass going on with that sound system, but again, we have the eight speaker, there is a better sound system available for the touring, but not a whole lot of bass, clarity was actually decent for the Accord, but anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Accord in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard with a few different views, not the very highest quality rear view camera, but I do like though that there is a few views available, but as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying in 2022, the Accord was an IIHS top safety pick plus, not yet rated for 2023, but I would imagine it would be the same thing there as that's I'm sure what they're going for. Front side side current airbag, do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags you don't always get that and rear side impact airbags you don't always get that either on other manufacturers so i love that also in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but then also coming standard of course Honda Sensing. And so what does that give you? I will tell you. Forward collision warning, lane departure warning, collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, lane keep assist, traffic jam assist, adaptive cruise control, traffic sign recognition, and a driver attention monitoring system as well. And if you were to go with the EXL or Touring, you're also going to get parking sensors and optional for the EX trim level and up will be a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. We have that option. But anyways, Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, a great interior space. The rear legroom is amazing. Cargo space in the trunk is actually amazing as well. So this thing, you could tell it got bigger. So that's pretty cool. Great standard safety as well. Honda Sensing definitely crushes it. And I love how it's standard on every single trim level across the board with luxury brands, believe it or not, like Mercedes and BMW, you have to pay for that extra safety that comes standard on the Accord. Also, the fuel economy on our hybrid trim level is ridiculous. The fact that it's possible to get over 50 miles per gallon on a sedan of this size is pretty darn impressive. So I absolutely love that. As far as for improvement goes, I'm gonna throw this out there. I want you guys to comment what you think, but styling on this one is kind of 50-50 for me. It somewhat looks like a Chevy Malibu from back in the day, but at the same time, I absolutely love the back end and the taillight design back there. So let me know what you guys think of the styling in the comment section below. Also, all-wheel drive option would absolutely be wonderful here. I live in Pennsylvania. We do get some snow from time to time, so all-wheel drive, especially if you put all-wheel drive on a hybrid like this and you got decent gas mileage at the same time, that's a really solid option right there for me. And like I said previously, multicolor ambient lighting I think would look dang good as well, like the Hyundai Sonata does, for example. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new Accord in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because you know that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.